little friend out. So good. Oh, I so did not remember to get this out to thaw. This is going to take longer to thaw than the skin. Oh, wellsies. Figure it out. Okay. Stay down there. Oh, nuts. I forgot to get um, paper towels. Oh, no! That's a lot of dog to have to wash, too. Poor Sunday. I'll be right back. I just realized I forgot to get water and a paper towel. So I'm going to immediately throw the AFK sign up, which is not my favorite, but there we go. Or here, I'll just put the other text in sign up. Okay, I'm back. I have water. I have paper towels. Uh, my bad. <laughs> like, you know, the most basic stuff I need every time, but they're not- they're the, they're the consumables. They're not always in my kit. But I got it now. Oh. So, Library Rat, with your dog, if I recall, she is afraid of water. So the fact that she got skunked, how did that go today? Poor puppo. Okay. Oh, sorry, let me, I'm gonna move my mic a little closer. Hopefully it'll help. Um, so I know that your dog doesn't like water. So if she was skunked, how did cleaning her up go? bad situation. I'm sure she got plenty of cuddles. <laughs> Alright, so I'm getting out my quail skin. I totally forgot to uh, thaw everything ahead of time because uh, I'm real cool. So that's going to be off camera softening up. Hopefully pretty quick. The skin should go pretty quick. This little nugget is the body. That's going to be a little bit um, tougher. That's okay. We will deal. Because when last we left our hero, we had this really great little uh, mount. But I need to finish up the head. And I realized I would kind of gotten ahead. Oh, hey, Sudanine. I would kind of gotten ahead of myself with making this. Because I usually stuff the head and then just jam the wire into it. But I think I needed the mental picture to see where that was going. So I'll probably actually just remove this or snip it off um, or smoosh it. I'm going to simplify this, I think is the uh, actual. Because my goal today, I got to make a head here and I've got my eyes, well, extra eyes. So I'm going to be using these top ones and I've got to mount them into the skull. And so usually what I do is I actually stuff the remnant skull, I turn the head inside out, I stuff the remnant skull with clay um, and set the eyes in it, then put the skin back over it and jam the whole thing on the body I made. And then I had a wing armature, but I'm not totally sure where it went. Oh, and a fit of very good planning on my part. The shelf I keep these things on is too tall for my cats, which means I can't see it. So... Ah, there's my Thursday stream. Put that guy over there. I just have to take it off the wall. 
Nope. Dang it. I wonder where that bit of wire was. Because I, I totally did that. I totally had a nice... Oh, I see it. It's on the floor. Dang it. Um, yeah, pseudonym, go ahead and put us on followers only for tonight, just so less chance of being interrupted. Thank you. I forgot about that. All right. After much excavating, I found my armature that I made, which honestly I probably could have remade in about that same amount of time, but whatever. Move that back. All right. Because I had made this little doodad to hold the wings. And I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to work out pretty nicely. Because that's going to go like that. That looks pretty rad to me. But. <laughs> Pseudonine, how judgy. <laughs> but you never know. I trust your moderator judgment. Thank you. <laughs> it might be a nice person. We don't know. Okay, no, actually, I'm, I'm entirely on board with you. That looks a bit spammy. <laughs> that seems fair. So yeah, if we have besmirched someone's good honor, um, get affiliated uh, now can totally call us out. That seems fair. That seems all right. <laughs> all right. I feel very silly for forgetting to uh, thaw this. I thought about it this morning. I was like, oh yeah, and after I do this thing I'm doing, I'll go and thaw my bird. Nope. Good job, me. Luckily, my hands are kind of warm, so I can mostly just... Because this is just totally frozen paper towel. Mostly getting it off. <laughs> no, you should not microwave it because then the delicious aroma of cooking bird will cause you to want to eat it and that would be a problem, right? <laughs> that is not why. <laughs> yeah, no, the most disgusting thing I've ever microwaved was an entire mouse, and I learned my lesson. Don't microwave. Don't microwave the whole mouse. You put it in a cup of water. If you need to microwave an entire mouse, don't put it on a plate. Because then the guts boil and explode and kind of look like old molten cheese, but they do not smell like it. All right, only lost a few feathers. Get out. Doop, doop, doop. <laughs> okay, so I have my lovely little skin. And so kind of what I was thinking of with my little friend. Oh, why microwave a mouse? You should know, you feed uh, snakes. I had only frozen mice, and I needed to feed a snake. Mistakes were made. But if you if you put the frozen mouse in a cup of water, it heats more evenly and it doesn't explode. Um, also, don't microwave it too much. So, if you need to quick thaw something to feed a snake, there's your, there's your hot tip. Um, or, do better and plan ahead. Is the, is the actual rightest answer. But, you know. We learn. Okay, so for this little friend, these are my wings. If I can get this in here first. <laughs> Library rat, you are not wrong. 
come on. You've never had, you've never ever been in a spot where you had to suddenly th- feed one of your snakes and you realize you forgot to thaw something. Never. <laughs> Time crunches. Life is like that. <laughs> not here absolutely I, all these w- wisdom uh we're gonna be the next influencers <laughs> people are like oh yeah that's what i need and how do i quick thaw that okay Well, I'm actually delighted to see I got the length of this forearm correct. That that lines up actually in a really like whoo satisfying way. Um, so let's see. Okay, so if those line up more or less there, that goes there. I think I can make this work. I think I got this. Um, so I'm gonna try and just feed this wire in past the wrist. Whoop, that came right out through the skin. Doop, doop, doop. Definitely not what I was trying to do. Let me try that again. If I'm going to screw it up, though, I want to do it on the inside of the wing because that's the part that's going to be covered. So <laughs> it's all good. I'm mostly trying to get this in the, into the wing for practice because this little guy is so simple. I would actually really easily be able to just um, sew the wings into place, but I'd, you know, do it right. This is good practice for I have a I have a pigeon for the future that I want to do, so pigeony practice. Pigeon related skills. So this is kind of crazy. So people of the internet, you can clearly see that wire, right? Like super clearly. There it is. It's a big old wire. That's inside the skin. The skin is so clear and so thin in this area that it's 100% visible. It might as well just be cellophane. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so... Didn't go all the way to the end of the hand, but I've got that into the wrist. That settling more or less on there. More or less. I might actually flex this out a little bit while I'm working on it so I can see it. Um... So I'm trying to get that wing delay correctly so I know I'm doing the right thing here, but... You know, actually, I should just tie this um, forearm down. That'll make me feel better. Because this is all about my feelings. I'm going to use my thick cable here. I might not want this. I might actually want to change it to uh, thread, but let's start this way. Okay. 
right? That, yeah, that actually looks okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy about my measurements for the wing because it's, it's all sitting pretty well here. I think I do want to wrap this a little bit. Straighten that out so I can actually maneuver without getting feathers in the way. I'm just going to wrap this a smidgy. I don't need to add a ton here, but the cable... We'll dry it out a little bit and um, keep it from sliding. So. Suppose I can get some cotton out. Let me grab some cotton. I'm gonna want this anyway. So. Just a poof. Clatter, clatter. You know, I trimmed that other end and I totally shouldn't have. Oh well. <laughs> my bad. Where are my tweezers? Whew. So in weird 2020 news, I attended a long distance funeral today, which was weird. So I'm sitting in my desk having feels because a friend's mother passed away. And like, now I'm back at the same desk doing something completely different. It's very weird to like have so many life experiences sitting in the same chair, you know, but that's how you adapt. Not my favorite. But you find ways to be there for your friends. And honestly, it was really good. You know, I don't... How do you describe a, a good funeral? Oh, it was well executed. Like, I don't know. But whatever socially acceptable term, it was that. Okay. It's pretty good. So I can probably just wrap this and tuck the end and have that out of my way. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't how anybody wanted to spend the day, but if you had to, then you know, that's where we're at. <sighs> All right, so my goal right now, and we'll see if I made the that wrapping too big. Um, I have to get, so this is where the bird's elbow is right now. That's where the end of the bone is. This is the actual elbow. You can kind of see that. So I gotta get that up there. Oh yeah, no, the current emoji choices are terrible. I'm working on it. <laughs> I will, I have a plan in place that just needs some time and I will get better emojis for everybody. Cause yeah, they're real bad. Because Twitch makes sure that the ones that are the basic emojis are totally not enough. Not what you want. And like in this moment, I could use something better. I hadn't really thought about having a sad emoji, but like, maybe I should. I mean, heck, for taxidermy, it might be nice just for people to like, have feelings about the specimens. Wow, there's a good one. Yeah, no, I'm working on it, guys. I'll get you better. Okay. So the feathers are a little wet right now, but there I have a wing shape. You can see how it's it's holding that form. I managed to get the elbow more or less exactly where I wanted it. 
wiggle it a little bit more, but I'm going to, okay, no, I'm going to wiggle a little bit more. I could use, it's, it's right there. It's right up against the elbow pocket, but I can tell there's some bunched up skin in there that I want to move a little farther down. There we go. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. And just slide these guys back over. Do, 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 do. Cover that up. Okay. So there, you can actually get my huge hand out of the way. You can actually see now inside of here, you can see the, the vertical lines that are the cable that I have wrapped around that bone. Uh, they're under the skin. I don't know who Zach Braff is, so if you think it is, it maybe is. The emo again, the emoji choices that they have as the base are kind of wacky. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's looking like a pretty good little wing. Ah, okay. Maybe? It's so little from my... Or here, this screen's a little bigger. Anyway, I trust in your judgment. Alright, so that's one wing... And largely the shoulder, although I haven't really set that yet. And so that's already giving my little bird a little bit more shape here. So that's good. So I'm going to do the other wing and then I'll put this whole thing around my body. And that should work out okay. Should. The world is full of shoulds. Hmm. So, because I, I keep thinking about this funeral. I feel weird doing taxidermy and talking about a funeral. It seems a little thick, but whatever. Um, it's my day. Uh, if anybody else ever has to, during all of this, um, attend a virtual uh, commemorative service of any sort, the kind of cool thing is you're not spending your day worrying about getting there on time and being dressed appropriately and having your stomach hurt in front of everybody and sneezing and whatever, all that like social drama of actually going to a memorial service of whatever, you you can just turn off the camera on Zoom and have your feels. That's kind of nice, you know? I was drinking tea the whole time because tea makes me feel better. Like, that was nice. I don't think Luann would mind. In fact, I think she'd probably be pretty cool with it. You know, so that's it's kind of interesting, like... There's some there's some benefits, I think, if you're, like, a couple of social rounds out from the, the focus of the memorial service, where being a little bit far away is fine. You know, I think if it's someone really close and you need the, the people, virtual's not good enough. But there are some benefits. And then I had a, you know, hang out with a friend at the end after everything was over, you know, that kind of weird debrief you have in weird corners with the, the three other people you know. <laughs> you know. And it just deals with all that anxiety. I don't know. It was... There was some good to it, if there can be good. So, it was an interesting experience. It's not that I recommend it, but, you know, if that's where things have led you, then... There's some something that's there that's worth thinking about. But the ability to drink tea and feel sad was pretty great. Great.
I'm just glad that technology at this point in uh, 2020, people have gotten enough things figured out that, like, the tech side wasn't obtrusive and annoying. So that was nice. Uh, the service was held in Michigan. So, not super far. Like, it's something that if it was a different time and place, I could have gone. Um, so it's not, like, super local. It's two and a half-ish hours away. But could have in a different world. But right now, you know, why would I endanger uh, everybody, all the family members, when I'm, you know, a friend? And so stay far away, let them choose to be there and be able to have better distance and whatever. And then, you know, but I could still text my friend and be like, hey man, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it was interesting. And there were 30-some people on the on the Zoom meeting, you know, so it was in good company there. Um, yeah, it was just interesting. So, sad, important, you know, all that sort of stuff. The human being in question uh, passed away due to complications of cancer, so this was not a COVID-related event in specific. Obviously, everybody's thinking about COVID and wearing masks and doing all that stuff, but... Um, at least it wasn't it wasn't the saddest thing that you could have for at an adult funeral right now. Yeah. Still screw you twenty twenty, etc. <laughs> but also this is starting to come together. Wings. Oh <sighs> Yeah. So sorry to be a bit of a downer, it's just really it's heavy on my mind. What can I say? Um but it's better than it was at the beginning of COVID because I, I do know people who had, a, you know, had loved ones pass away early in the year when things were in lockdown and, you know, no one was traveling at all and nobody knew how to run Zoom yet <laughs> and all that, like, awfulness. Like, just layer upon layer upon layer of you don't really need that right now. Um, so it was, it was nice in as much as it could be nice. And, uh... There were bagpipes, which was cool. Although, man, bagpipes already kind of have, like, a harsh, screamy element. And when they're weirdly filtered through a microphone on a stand and they're kind of far away, whoo, a little bit of the screamy, screamy was, was very evident with those. But I hopefully for the people in attendance, it was beautiful. And depending on how close they were to the mic, it was okay. But you could tell they were processing off camera and it was a little bit weird um but whatever again not actually important for me And interestingly, like, right before the um, memorial service, I had finished filling out a sympathy card for somebody whose quail died. <laughs> so, uh, that bird lived a long and beautiful life. Uh, good on you, Humphrey Bird Guard. You were a great guy. Uh, yeah, no, Shard Mom, go for it. What's on your mind? Put this not in a weird spot. Anyway. Do, do, do. I gotta do that elbow thing again on this this wing.
Oh, that one just sat right on there. Okie dokie. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Yeah, so that's starting to take shape, right? You can kind of see it's holding the wings out. And, I, you know, I've got some wire here. That's fine. I'll fix that once I get things a little bit more in the spots I'm going to put them in. But... This arm, I almost think I made a little short, but it's more or less working. All right. Uh, by new Star Trek show, do you mean Picard or the animated show? Or Discovery, I guess. There's a couple of, of new ones that are out there. I've seen, um, I haven't seen Picard yet, nor the new animated one. I want to see both of those. Oh, Discovery. Uh, we've watched the, f the first whole season, maybe part of it, into the second one. Um, so I'm not, not caught up, but I have seen some. It's very dark and it's, it's a, we it's got so many weird shout outs to the original series while also being dark, which is really interesting because the original series, I don't think of as dark. Um, what did you think of it so far? And yeah, obviously, if anybody else has seen it, let me see. Oh, wow. The first episode was, whoo, a lot. They had some tone to set. Man. Okay, turning this head inside out is turning out to be a pain. My eyes are super dry tonight, too. Bleh. That's what I get for having the heater on, right? Alright, so here's the part where things are getting gross. So if people aren't into this, I'm, I'm currently turning this bird's head back inside out. So there's inside out head and uh, skull. So I could... I made that a pretty good size. That is that is nice. That is nice. You know, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can just do this like this. I bet I can't. I think I have to get the legs on first. Order of operations. That's a big thing. <laughs> yeah, no, the the first couple episodes are, like, huge and tense, and they set the whole scene, and then you get into, like, the slow pacing for the rest of the series. But it, that show doesn't screw around. They, they went in a lot of weird directions. Weird Klingons. Weirder Klingons. I don't know how we want to phrase that. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and put this bird's legs in and we'll kind of uh, work up from the back. So I'm going to get the legs in place, loop all this over, and then kind of I'll have the head last. I think it'll work. I uh, might have to do weird things with bending, but as long as I don't tear it, then I'm totally happy. And now is the time I really don't want to be re-wetting it, but I also don't want it to dry out, so that's my life. Because if it dries out, it'll definitely tear. So. A few little morsels of bird on here. Okay. So, bird orientation. 
what is happening with this leg? Uh, I had to get it streaming. We don't have any sort of um, cable or anything. Um, I guess CBS is um, broadcast, but we don't... I just do streaming. So we had gotten it, I think, from Amazon. I think they had a partnership with CBS for that. I do not... Okay, I, here's the thing that I keep almost messing up. What I super don't want to do is twist the leg. I want it to to point in the correct direction but there's just this little tube a little feather tube and so it's so easy to just get that twisted uh, and I'm super trying not to little friend please stay in the correct orientation so let's see there's his butt their butt bird butt the foot goes like that so that should be straight should should but yes star trek stuff is uh, mostly on cbs and there's a whole cbs online thing that i've been considering giving them my money because they want it very much um and they keep telling me that and so i'm interested in seeing discovery that's interesting that they were uh just now showing it i guess they're trying to get more people interested in it to reshow it because it it originally came out, what, like two years ago? Maybe more? So it's been out for a minute. Okay, this is going really, really well. So you guys can see the, the wire coming up through here, and it's about halfway up the leg. And that's perfect. I haven't busted through uh, incorrectly, which is good. So I think I'm going to get the other foot on. And then, like, basically pull on a little pair of pants. And I think my orientation is still right. And this leg is not particularly twisted, I think. Probably... there yeah try to do both of these at once because this bird is so little uh, this is a little different than doing a, you know, like a ginormous pigeon I have a lot more space to play around this this is just so fine <laughs> Shard mom I'm here to educate I'm here to give you all the important facts you you need in life <laughs> All your taxidermy related trivia questions. Oh, although speaking of bird stuff, I don't know if everybody who's on right now was uh, on my stream when I was talking about cassowary skin, but I, I learned some really rad stuff about collagen this week. There's a sentence you don't hear often. Um... <laughs> So here's my here's my cool thing about collagen. Um, the color blue does not occur naturally in organic material very often. Um, so you get blue uh, stone. You can get stuff like that, you know, cobalt and whatever. But you don't tend to get blue animals or plants. So like roses are red and violets are violet. Guys. Um... But also, like, m butterflies aren't really blue. Well, of course they are, but it depends wh what is bending the light. In the case of butterflies and most bird feathers, if it's blue, it's a structural issue with how the scales of their feathers or their um, the scales of their wings basically ch augment the light. And uh, so then the question was, what about large vertebrates with blue skin? Because you have cassowaries and baboons and mandrills and these critters that are these huge vertebrates whose skin is like electric freaky blue. 
And it turns out that the collagen in their skin, the, the fibers of the collagen actually are lined up so that they refract the light into the blue spectrum. And so our collagen is disorganized and because it doesn't serve a pigmentary purpose that way. We get our pigment from, like, melanin. Uh, but they get their pigment from bending the light with collagen structures. Freaky crazy. And I didn't find that conclusively with cassowary as I was reading it from a paper about mandrels, but still. Okay, so there's a weird image. There's his little feeties. I've got the feathers, or I'm sorry, I've got the wires now right into the sole of the foot. And so I'm actually going to cut. I don't. I could just push, but then that's really likely I'm going to just stab myself because I've done it. So just nip through the ball of the foot a little bit there. There we go. So that one's, that's one. And then nip this one. <laughs> the butterflies in the blender image is such a good one. Because you know people have literally done this to, to check this. So that's what science is. Alright, so now we're going to slide our little feet up here. Well, that already looks associated, if weird. There's, yeah, I already twisted that one. What about you? Are you twisted wrong? Ah, it's so hard to tell. Alright. Get that around that bend, because that didn't need to have a bend right now. Alright. I've almost got the feet in place. Ah, they look so good. Okay. So there. Now you can see it, right? Can see the little bend of the leg ending in a foot so that's now i just gotta pull his pants up okay well i'm already feeling not too bad about uh the modeling job i did the other day oh i might have to cut this bone off well, we'll see so here you guys can see I have this little pink bone sticking out here. I usually leave that in there when I'm doing um, uh, study skins. Um, I might not need it for the model here, but it keeps me honest to keep it in there, right? We'll see. I mean, if it's just if there's too much bulk, I cut it out. Yeah. Ah, I lost a couple feathers. Nuts. Carnation. Yeah, I think I'm cutting that bone out. It's not doing me as much good right now. Hmm. So that's the thigh. Part okay, this is fixable. I actually move this back down to there. Can I get this higher? I had my lower leg bends in kind of weird spots, so that is totally addressable. I basically just have to stretch or uh, restraighten the wires, and you know, not have those fake joints there because it's a wire. I can just put the joint wherever I want, um, and that fixes it right up. It's also a little extra sticky because I specifically re-wet it. And it's one of those like push-pull things where I need to re-wet it, I need it to stay pliable, but wet tissue is sticky. So I need to be able to pull the skin up to the model. It's 
being a little tight here, but I'm almost there. Almost there. There, because I got his tail placed. In the back end of that looks like a bird now. Yeah, so that's grim, but that's starting to look birdish, right? That, that's a little bird butt. These feathers are actually starting to dry up nicely, so that's good. Okay, I think I got the one leg pretty well on. Just have to pull this one up a little higher. Yeah, I'm losing some feathers down here, but once it completely dries, that should not be terribly visible. Okay, and I've got the rump more or less in the right spot at this point. Again, button quail don't really have much of a tail, so I can get that to sit more or less in the right spot. There we go. Here, I'll hold it up here. You can see the cute little tail. So. All right, so things I can tell after getting this more or less set in the right spot is I knew I had sort of understuffed the rump and I can feel there's some air back there. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna screw with that. Now that I've got this stuff lar largely placed where I want it. Um, I can get a little back there. Let's, let's put a little bit of junk in the trunk. Just because I don't, I don't like having big, empty areas. They dry funny. And then if they do become visible, they're like super embarrassing. So, you know, don't want that. So I try not to jam myself in the eye with bird legs. Do, 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 do. Good. Is that why it's giving me? Hmm. No, that's more or less right. It's always hard not to just like preen all the feathers into the right position right off the bat because I want to know it's right, but that's silly. I'm not there yet. We are definitely not at a pretty stage, not when its head is hanging here inside out. Like, focus on the moment. Oh, and thank you to everybody who popped on last night um, when I did a random stream. I did a, for those who don't know, I did an unscheduled stream last night. I just felt like playing with a 3D model that I had. Um, so I was just on for like an hour and 20 minutes-ish. Uh, punctuated by my cat Rumi jumping on my desk, interrupting the whole feed, and literally sticking his face directly into this camera. Like he knew what it was. <laughs> I'm like, how, do you actually know you're on the internet? It's like, cats in the internet, I guess, but it was pretty funny. Um, so my moderator did manage to get a, a clip of that, which I've posted as a highlight. So if anybody wants to see my cat Rumi being a dork, it is on my highlights. Um, he, he is not in here right now because that door is closed. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys liked it. It was pretty funny. So I just wanted to do like a casual, you know, I happen to be doing this project at my desk anyway, might as well turn the feed on kind of thing. You know, wasn't really thinking about it. And <laughs> intently, uh, the cat wanted his two minutes of stardom. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to see the recording. Yeah, and Mega, nice to see you. How's the, uh, how's all your prep going? So I, I figured you were busy. <sighs> A lot of people I know are very busy right now. Good, you know. Better than not. Yeah, I'm glad the recordings are up, because that's... <laughs> Then you, you don't have to be like, oh, I missed it. Like, no, 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 it's there. Um, and for any of... Yeah, right. Packing oh my. For any of the my feeds that are no longer on, because they, they disappear after 14 days, I have started uploading stuff to YouTube. My YouTube channel, I haven't put any real work into it, so it's um, barely even functional, but it exists. So I will have a place that people can go and look. Okay. Dem thighs. So, you know, they're starting to fill in there. That's not, not too shabby. Let's see if we can get these wings in a place that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Okay, so if I hold that, basically there. Oh, yeah, that's starting to be a little quail body. Okay. So ignoring the the grotesque floppy head, um, that's looking coilish. I'm worried I'm losing too many feathers off the butt. You guys can see there's kind of a, a raggy area here. That may be, I've so I've lost a ton of feathers. Uh, the molt is so bad. Like I've got all these little stick feathers that are just coming off. So the the molt is is really getting to me in this guy. I'm a little worried he's gonna have a little bit of a bald spot, but I can't. Can't freak out about that too much until I um, dry it. And it, it's crazy how much they fluff when you dry them. And I know that, and I just have to, like, believe it. Because I've told other people that, and I just gotta believe it. So I'm gonna actually tie the wing armature onto the main body at this point. So that'll stop some of the heinous flopping. Uh, okay. Well, good luck. Um, <laughs> you can tattoo birds. Uh, Mega, good luck with all the packing. And I'll touch base with you at some other point about your big move. So good luck with that. Okay. So I've got the wings on just barely. Uh... But let's see. Let me. Here, I'll hold it up here. Whoop. So it looks like a headless bird body. You know, you got a definite back end here. And I just gotta put a head on it. Oh, I'll let that dry out a little bit. Rewet this. So, not here. To go back to your um, comment about tattooing, I know somebody who was doing taxidermy based art where they were doing that, they would um, shave parts of deer and tattoo that the the deer hide and then have it as a, a tattooed uh, mounted deer. Very, it was very cool and super weird. So everything you would imagine in that sort of setup. Super cool, very weird. Do I have to cut this, yeah, okay. So I have my, uh, critter clay. So, there you go. Critter clay's claim to fame is that not only does it just dry on its own, uh, it also doesn't shrink particularly when it dries. So you can use it inside of a specimen and it doesn't uh, go away. No, no, this is important stuff. I know you like art, man. So. Ooh, is this an internal Ziploc? No, it's not. Okay. I thought it had a double... Ziploc uh, protector, and it does not. So, oh, 
Oh my god, it's so soft. <laughs> okay, so uh, Library Rat and anybody else who's on who has been in my lab, this is such nice fresh clay. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is nothing like we had in the lab. Whoo! That's, uh, that's real nice. Gracious. Because we had this exact type of clay, but it had been there for years. Like, years, you guys. It was, it was a bad scene. Um, and we just kept kind of remoistening it and hoping. And you can do that a lot. You really can. Um, but, you know, there's a limit. It really stops being pliable. <laughs> this is, this is pretty nice. Yeah, no, this is... Whew, that just is going right on. This is cool. That's cool. Okay. So the question is, can I get this head inverted around this clay blob? Uh, maybe. Maybe? Yes? Yes, no, maybe? I think this is good. I think this is working. Put one more. This might be the best thing ever. Okay, let me... I gotta make sure I get a little more clay in the eyes. Um, so what do you... That piece. Oh, that's the nasal area. Okay, that a little weird. Uh, let's see. I might have left a little too much bone in, so it's kind of looking a little extra funny. Not that this looks normal, but but even worse. Okay. Oh, this is cool. Okay. Ooh, I'm so happy about this. Let me get some eyeballs. Finally getting our eyeballs. So I'm going to get clay smeared all over these. It doesn't matter. Um, I'll just wipe it off. Oh, they're so nice. I really love taxidermy eyes. They're so lovely. Like, yeah. Well, you guys will see in a second when it's in the bird, but it's real nice. Wow, these are still a little big for this coil. But I think it's going to work out. Okay, so the nice thing about leaving the uh, skull in there is I can tell more or less where those eyes go. I can get some symmetry going. So let's see if I can actually get the head flipped. Uh, correct side out again without making a big hole okay so far so good don't want to rip it during this step do da do da because unsurprisingly the clay is like super sticky so it's sticking to the inside of the skin a lot not shocking Uh, where's my other probe? I'm going to use my round-ended probe to kind of get in there and help me set the skin. <sighs> That's, I just ripped a feather out, so I didn't do anything huge, but... Uh, yeah, so Jardin Mom, the clay is in there, and are so are the glass eyes. So hypothetically, you can see the little beak right here. Once I get this totally set it's gonna look magically like a bird <laughs> that's the goal anyway <laughs> so. oh that's already looking birdish so i'm pretty happy there uh, let's see. oh my god these eyes ah i love these eyes these are these are such good ones they're, they are big. I can definitely tell that if I could have gotten a size smaller, I would have. Um, there's not a lot of game birds that are this small, so. But 
like you guys can see that shine that little eyeball coming out oh little bird you're looking you're looking good good job little bird yeah like right there get some light like bam right that's a bird you make them 3D again and give them an eyeball and it's a bird. Okay. I think I might have made the head a little big. Moosh this around a little bit. But overall, it's looking real good. Pull this whole mantle down. Man, I'm getting so much feather loss. The molting is so, so rough. So rough. They have such lovely brown, like, detailed plumage. You don't want to lose it all. It's so nice. Oh, you can really see his ear. In my own light again. But you guys can see the, um... This big disc here, that's that's the bird's real ear, and usually you can't see that, um, but it's kind of distended right now, so I just have to kind of hide that. Because it should be there, but, you know, it shouldn't be super obvious. Okay, so, like, bird, right? It's, it's birdish. We're, we're in the realm of bird. We're definitely bird adjacent at this point. I'm pretty happy with the wings. I don't think I'm going to screw with those too much. Probably not. Alright. I'm bending some of the wires to get the bird's wings closer to its body because I don't want it holding out the skin, because ideally I really want to be able to tie, uh, or, uh, sew up the skin pretty quick. I don't want it to dry on me while I'm messing around with all this. I've almost got that. Ooh, look at that majestic neck. That's, that's a good looking bird. Um, Okay. I can tell I need to take a second and just clean my workspace. Like, you can see there's feathers and there's clay and there's whatever. So I'm going to just take a sec. So this is a good moment. If anybody has any questions, uh, pop them in the chat. We are on follower mode for con uh, chatting tonight. So if you do want to post a question and you're not a follower, please give me a follow. Uh, and I will answer your question. But for the moment, I just got to tidy my space. Yeah, and it's an absurd amount of clay for such a little tiny uh, bit of each project, but it makes such a difference because you can get those eyes exactly where you want them to be. I like this packet of critter clay too because it does have a zip top. So, get as much air out of that as I can. Yeah. So that's out of the way. You know what? I don't think I'm going to use my body tonight at all. Just pop that out of the way. All right, small bird. Get all your loose feathers off. I do not need these eyes. I just need the other eyes. Boop. That's a perfectly good bit. Okay, so let me... Yeah, so you can see, like, I've lost a lot of feathers here. There, none of them, like, even this one, I can see that there's, uh, man, it's hard to get, it's such a tiny little thing. If you can see, nah, anyway, trust me, there's a little bit of molt even on the big, nice looking feathers. Giving me some hassle. Breaking off. My cats are going to go nuts when they come in here. 
Uh, no, for this, there won't be clay anywhere else. There, I just don't need it. If you're doing a really big mount, you might want to use clay to sculpt muscle um, to fill in the legs. But... Oh, hey! <laughs> Good to see you, Jigsy. Oh yeah, Becky, I recognized your name. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to keep using your screen name or not, but hey, I'm glad you can make it. Well, your timing is good, so I just cleaned my workspace. You can see my bird. Um, I had got it had gotten a little bit messy. There was a lot of feather bits, but boom, this guy's coming along. Yeah, and I think for um, Pokemon, I think you also have that same screen name for Pokemon. But so this is my little coil. Uh, and we're, we're in end game. It's starting to be like, that's an overall quailish shape, but I, you know, still open. You've still got the whole little fake body hanging out here. I'm going to need to finish securing the wings. So right now this thread is attached to my wings. I haven't really convinced myself exactly where I want them to be, but it's time to commit because I'm actually really happy overall with how this setup is going. So I'm going to tie these wings down and uh, do a little bit more sewing, I, or I'm sorry, stuffing. So I had very specifically left the body a little skinny. I made my, my model just a little undersized because A, it's a lot easier to slip the skin on. Um, so right there. And then also I want to be able to... Um, add the the fluff in minute quantities so fluff adding hmm tax term all right so i've got that soon on all right but yeah becky i use the same screen name for everything so i'm i'm glorgon on pretty much every um format that i'm on uh Oh, you're just the cutest little face. So half of good taxidermy faces is getting the eyes just right. And like that eye is flawless. That one's a weird one. I'm going to have to play with that, but not yet. Not yet. I can't let myself fall, fall down that particular rabbit hole because I'm still trying to get this stuff set up. So the neck I left really skinny because um, I didn't know exactly how I was going to end game with that uh, clay. I don't think I have that quite... There's my probe. Hold on. I think at this point I need a pointy probe. Okay, so this is going to look super rude because it looks like a bird again. Um, oh, I've never turned on my other light. Sorry, you guys have been watching this in the dark. I apologize. But so, this looks really rude, jamming a big thing in his mouth. But the whale, the quail doesn't mind. Yeah, I gotta. From overhandling, sometimes you can kind of mush the head too much. You know, because you're squeezing things. So. That looks a little better. My ear is still kind of the wrong shape. But. Okay. So I think I need to start adding stuffing. Oh, wow, with the light on you can really see the translucence of that skin so like back here you can just see how thin the bird skin is it's crazy crazy little bird so i think what i might do is actually start sewing up the bottom because i'm pretty happy with how that is and then i can worry about stuffing the top So this is my uh, taxidermy specific needle so I don't forget and like sew a button on with a slightly crusty needle. 
the difference between doing this in a lab versus doing it in your house. Because don't forget that's your taxidermy needle. Now it's just like extra plastic. This is just one of those little sewing kits from like a hotel, but you know, it's got a needle in it. That's what I need. It's even still slightly threaded from uh, when I was doing a taxidermy demo this weekend. Or not this weekend, last weekend. Yeah, I'm getting more thread. I live the high life. Just want that a little longer. So the bird, again, like humans tend to look at faces. We care about faces in the fronts of animals generally. So I can finish up the back end of the bird now and it'll probably be fine. And then I can uh, tidy up. Oh, okay. Well, Jinxie, I'm glad you could stop in. It was good to see you. Well, see you. You know what I mean? Hopefully next time you'll get to see more weird stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to let you know when I'm doing the sheep skull. It's gross and exciting. Mostly gross. I have to say, I think that sheep was the grossest thing I've done on here so far. Because this is, like, moderately gross. If you're not coming on and ready for it, it's a little extra weird. Uh, but that sheep skull, that was, that was a little splashy. And I'm so I'm tying bad knots in my thread. Do, do, do. There we go. Man, I got clay on everything. That's okay. Clay wipes off. So for those who are into sewing, the uh, the way you sew up taxidermy is a ladder stitch or a baseball stitch, depending on how you describe it. Uh, super easy. Ooh, a tendon came out. That's what that is. Grim. I'll worry about that later. Uh, but yeah, so you want a stitch that you can pull on and it will tighten up the whole thing you uh so you know something you can pull one in the whole thing kind of gets tight so a nice zigzaggy ladder stitch will do you real good I really want to round out this little butt I think I got it kind of keeps looking like this back end's twisted, but I think the feathers are just uh, messed up from being handled. And it might be twisted, I guess. So I really want to like move all this stuff now. It's going to be a lot harder if I've got it all set before I figure out that something is like totally twisted to one side or something. So let's see. I'm glad Becky could pop on. It's crazy how busy everybody is. Cause like, you know, I do this every Saturday, but Saturdays, man, Saturdays are busy. Saturdays are the peak of everything. Yesterday was pretty funny, though. I was surprised how many people saw the notification and popped on to see what I was up to. Made me feel loved and appreciated. Thanks, guys. Okay, I think what I actually want to do before I sew this up is make the back a little more stuffed. Give them a little more of a hunch look. So before I actually start sewing, let me get some fluff back there. I'm trying to go in from both sides so I don't end up with like a weird hunchback bird. I want an evenly hunchback bird, obviously. Yeah, actually that's just nice. That's a nice like straight kind of gentle curve overall. 
I don't think I have to add too much back there. It's a little bird. This is definitely the phase of taxidermy that sort of smells nice. At this point, the, the bird has mostly dried, and so it's just kind of a warm feather smell. So, you know, it smells like cuddling a chicken or a cockatiel, for those who have cuddled these things, which I have. I recommend it to anybody. More cuddles. Everybody needs more cuddles. Yeah, I might not screw with that too much more. I think I got that pretty straight. Could use a little more here. Put a little more on this side. Oh yeah, I just noticed it's only 817. Cool, I'm making pretty good time with this step. So I don't want to linger. I say as I've been lingering. I know, I know. But yeah, I should just sew up the bird. We're doing it. We're gonna we're gonna sew up this bird. So There's always a little bit more fluff I want to put into it. Because I remember I specifically had kind of underdone the back end knowing I could just do this and add the stuffing and so now is the actual time to do that. As our little friend had a nice belly on him. This was a happy bird. All right. So ladder stitch. Okay, am I not as big enough? Uh, skin is elastic, so I have to make like kind of silly big knots if I don't want them to come through. And there's obviously other ways to make sure your knot doesn't come, or to, to make sure your thread doesn't come through. You could just knot it once it's through. But I just do a classic big dumb knot. The challenge during this part is to not sew the feathers into the um, into your stitch. Ugh! And like this guy, every so far, every stitch I've gotten feathers into it, and you just you pick them out. You make the stitch, you pick all the feathers out, you do it again. And you know, if you're really cool, you don't get them in there in the first place. But sometimes you just fix it as you go. So I don't know if you guys heard my phone go off. Um, that was the collections manager from my old museum liking my Facebook post that I was doing this. So, yay. She's really cool. Wow, that already looks more like a bird's butt. Look at that bird butt. That's a perfect little bird butt. It's looking good. And it's looking good mostly because it's drying, and so the feathers are fluffing up. It is, it is, you know, something to do with my work, but a lot of it's just that it looks really good as the feathers dry. Oh, it's such a relief to start getting it sewn back up. As I fret about this step, I'm always worried if I wait too long and it'll dry and get weird and... All that. This is looking pretty good already. Feels like I could use a little more stuffing down there. In my bird saddle region. I hadn't quite plumped out the uh, thighs all the way. So, you know. Gotta do that.
Oh, um, going back to the idea of emojis. If anybody has an idea of any ideas for emojis, please let me know. I've I've got some things in the works, but if there's an emoji that you wish was there, an emotion you wish you could evoke, uh, I'm looking for your inspiration. I'm hoping to have something rolled out by next week, um, but we'll see. Oh, that's looking really good. Okay. Yeah, this is coming together. Uh, the belly is still definitely understuffed. Which I knew it was going to be, but... Now is the time. So a few more stitches, keep this guy rolling. And then once I get it uh, totally sewn up, then it, that's where the posing and endless grooming come in. Like, you pose it like Gumby, you just bend all the wires internally, which is another reason you want to make sure it's still pliable before you get to that step, so you don't just crack something off. Um, so uh, I will be doing that, I'll be trying to pose it like right away. And then once it's posed, you have kind of forever to groom it to get every single feather in exactly the right spot. And there's there's a point of diminishing returns. You know, things will dry. You might break things off. Um, so you still want to get that done somewhat quickly, but it's got a longer timer. So you have a little more freedom to muck around once you have your pose set. So I will be playing with that. The fact that this little bird had feathers all over its belly is just still so weird to me. I'm so spoiled on passerines, little perching birds that have like no feathers on their tummies. But a little ground bird, there's lots and lots of them. I kind of lost my uh, edges over here, but they look better. You know what? Let's get these feet set. The uh, the wires keep threatening my face. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need that to be a problem. Uh, maybe I should have taken the actual bones out of the knees. I can really feel them. A little late. Maybe I can just get it behind the stuffing. Let me... I think I've disjointed this leg entirely. Can I just get this bone out? I don't know if you could, I just could hear the very gentle cracking as I was maybe being a little rude to it. Can I just get this out? No, I think it's still attached. Oh, nope, there it is. That's coming out. All right. Yeah, so I <laughs> don't, need, don't need that, obviously. Let's see if I can just break the other one off. This is not how I would choose to do this. Okay, yeah, you can hear the little popping noises. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so I've learned a thing. I need to take those out when I'm doing mounts, or at least the size of mount. So... 
This is why I need more practice doing this style of mount. It is the Aldi learning. Oh, crunch. Yeah, lots of crunching. P.S. Birds are delicate. Yeah, so basically I've removed the um, calf bone. More or less. Man, my eyes are dry. Can I get this one out? Yeah, this is what I meant by like you gotta you gotta figure these things out before you make all the stitches because if I had sewn it up and then wanted these bones out, that'd be a nightmare. As it is, this is not ideal, but I can probably get it out without undoing all of my hard work. Just take the moment of digging. All right, yep, so don't need those. We learn. This will probably make this a lot simpler for me. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be a lot better. Okay. Hello, get my little bird feedback and hopefully not jam myself in the face with wires. Lost some more feathers along with two bones, but you know, one of those was intentional. All right, so I obviously moved some stuffing around, so I just have to kind of reset. Mostly this thigh, this thigh got a little weird. Let's replump some thighs. Because as anybody who eats bird meat knows, you want nice plump thighs. And if you don't eat bird meat, trust me, plump thighs. Okay, I think I can go back to sewing this up now. I feel good about that. I'm gonna need like a big old piece of cotton here, right across the dumb. So I think I mentioned this before, but I purposely don't add a ton of cotton in any given go because I, um, it's really a lot easier to add than to subtract. And so just kind of layer it up instead of thinking I've got it in one, one swell foop. Okay, where's the edge of my skin? So something bird skin does um, and it dries is it curls along the, the cut edge. And so it, it like, it'll curl inward like this and it's, uh, super annoying if you forget because then you're like, wow, this is a much skinnier bird than I thought because you're, you're sewing it here as opposed to like way over here. Um, so now that I've been screwing around with something else, I have to make sure to go back and uncurl those edges or I will be sad. My bird will be funny shaped. Funnier shaped. And since this bird doesn't have a really obvious um, naked central line, I could easily lose track of that. Okay, dokie. That's come along. Oh wow, I've got a ton of clay still on here.
Mm. Whew. I've been bending down on that for a minute. Oh. All right. Mm. All right, now that that's nice and clean. Oh, yeah. Yes, p taking a moment to, to clean my tools and uh, clean my workspace makes just a humongous difference. What am I looking at here? It's a bird. So. Yep, so we're going on this side. So you can see that's starting to, you know. Right now you can still really tell where my central seam is. I'll have to fluff that up a lot but it is filling in and I've put a pretty good amount of stuffing in there and I'm feeling pretty happy about um, the shape. It's, it's filling that in pretty nicely. I just used the word pretty way too many times in that sentence. So sorry. Okay, so I'm not feeling any empty areas around the middle. So now let's take a moment and screw around with this chest area. So I made my initial incision all the way up to like the first bend of the neck, and that's actually looking pretty accurate. The way I, I bent this um, form here is more or less in that area. It's a little tight. It's not too bad. This area tends to be a little tight because of the wings, because I've given extra shape, so I have to kind of massage around that. And I'm losing a ton of feathers again. Man, this molt is so rough. Like, look at the big stick end to this. Meh. Okay. I don't think I want to add any more stuffing up here. I think I want that nice narrow chest, which my original body had. And that's fine. So, pretty much just sewing. So, all right. Okay, my hands are shaking. Whoa, I need a stretch. Ugh. Like, if you can't get the tip of the needle to go in the direction you want, that's a sign that your muscles need a break. I'm gonna do the full stretch. We're gonna stand up. We're gonna do this right. Oh, man. Hopefully it didn't uh, appear for you guys, but man, there's been lots of crackings <laughs> in my neck. So, all right, let me try that. Let me try that again. Cause I gotta finish. I'm in. I'm in the no turning back. I cannot pop it back in the freezer kind of thing. Uh, I have done some uh, research, and you can like rehydrate things, but you really want like a mister and. It's, it's a delicate operation, which all comes down to, if you'd done better on the first time, it wouldn't be so bad. So. <laughs> One of my lab friends is currently texting me for getting that I'm on the live stream. I'm going to tell her. Here. I'm going to say... <laughs> Uh, she and I are skinning a beaver next week, so she's giving me an update that. So I'm going to say good 
Look. I bet your order will arrive on time. Also, I'm texting you while live on Twitch. Lol. Boom. All right. <laughs> That's your warning. If you know me and you text me while I'm doing this, from here on out, I'm just going to answer. Because uh, that's funny. Okay. And for those who are concerned, yes, I touched my phone. I'm just going to wipe it off with um, rubbing alcohol and not worry too much about it. So don't borrow my phone. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that didn't work. Doo -doo -doo. So like a tiny bird. Home stretch. This molt, I tell you. And then I get to do this again with the other bird. But luckily, I've been learning a lot off of this one, so I'm kind of excited to see how that goes. Being sort of the point. Ah, uh, my friend is not currently watching because she's actually at work, but she's on a break right now, so she might stop in. Do do do. Man, it's pretty late. She works in clothing retail. I'm surprised. That's true. Yeah, in the age of COVID, you really shouldn't be borrowing anybody's phone. So now you super don't want to borrow my phone. One way or another, it's got cooties. Cooties, of course, being a technical term. So, I actually might stream tomorrow afternoon to do, like, more of the grooming and setting on this little bird. You know, so it's, I'll get it, I'll get it sewn up and posed tonight, for sure. But then I might futz with it tomorrow. Just because I want to have that done and there's no reason not to do that with the camera on. So if anybody's around tomorrow, I'll be doing... I won't have the gross warning up because it will just be cute. I have totally sewn a feather into the line. That's why I'm pausing here. I'm like, ah. so basically I'm trying not to swear a lot. <laughs> Gosh, gee willikers. This one just really wants to stay in my thread. There we go. Because anybody who knows me in real life knows that I swear constantly. So I'm basically treating this uh, feed the way I did if I was at the desk at the museum and uh it's hard <laughs> it takes a lot of practice to to change that and i'm a big fan of making fake curse words that don't sound like anything else because if you say oh fudge everybody knows what you mean you know oh shoot they know what you mean um oh nuggets Leaves it up to interpretation. Gives me an air of mystery. Ah, oh, stop. No, I mean, nuggets could be poop. <laughs> Alright, I'm fine with that. But doesn't sound like it. No, Clara, that's a, it's a little bird. It's kind of scraggly right now, but it's a little bird. Okay, fine. So nuggets or poop? We now have a thing. So if I say, oh, nuggets, I'm saying, oh, poop, but in a more descriptive way. So I'm okay with that. 
Similarly, Oh Nuts is, I think, a fine one. That's a, that's a classic. That's a thing you learn in middle school. But it's a good one. Because it's not explicit. I mean, I, I guess it could be... Oh Nuts could be, like, Oh Testicles? I don't know, but... <laughs> oh Testicles sounds like a riff off of a Christmas song. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Ah, that didn't work. I'm so close to getting this sewn up. I'm so, so close. I had a stitch just uh, pop loose because it was like through the base of a feather and it got a little weird there. That almost, uh, shoot. Okay, I think we're hitting the end where it is starting to dry because it's ripped now twice in the same spot, which I'm not happy about. You can see how I'm so close, like, I'm I'm in the middle of that fluff ball. But I just have to get it closed. So I'm gonna sew really far into the skin. And hopefully not biff this. Doop doop doop, not biffing it. Definitely doing a good job. Art, art, art and stuff. Okay. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, it just keeps ripping through the tissues, so that means I'm too dry. Um, so I'm gonna go through this part. Oh, I was so close. I mean, we're talking like less than a centimeter. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I blame my friend for texting me. This is not true. So what I, basically what I have to do now is not tighten it too much. So the whole time I've been sewing it, I've been more or less drawing the sides together for these last few stitches and being a little more... Oh, nuts, I need to put more in the neck. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, I can do this. It's going to be fine. That's a lot of feathers. Goodness me. That's okay. So it's interesting. I want to make sure that there's not too much stuffing in the back of the neck because that's where the S curve is. Um, of the neck, but you know, you can't have a little. It shouldn't just be an empty void. So nuts. Let's see. Ooh, I need a little bit more there. <laughs> okay, we're close. I I needed to pause and add a little bit more into here, but luckily not a just a ton, a ton. It's Moving in the right direction. Yeah, I've got like an empty spot. You can kind of see I pushed it in so there was a big shadow there. So I've got to get a little bit more into that spot. And we're good.
Okay. All right, I'm going to declare good enough and sew it up because I need to not miss my window of opportunity here to do this. So the good news is, as much as I'm a little ticked about the tearing that I had here. This is an incredibly fluffy area, and so it's gonna cover up really nicely. So we're not gonna see it too bad, but not what I wanted, you know, not ideal. All right. People who sew probably know this trick where you can um, put a needle or pin through the loop of the knot you're trying to tie and then just kind of point it where you want the knot to go. And the knot will slide along your pin and tie itself down at the base. So I can manage to tie my knots more or less up against the bird's skin. I taught that trick to a lot of my lab folk because it is a good trick. I need smaller scissors. All right, now I have to trim my um, thread off without cutting a feather. Aha, I did it. Okay. Okay, so my bird's together. So I'm gonna take another second and clean my workspace because uh, I've got, like, random uh, femurs sitting around. As you do. I, I used all but this amount of clay. Or clay? Ooh, cotton. Good job, brain. Okay, so I don't need my sewing needle for the rest of this. I'm going to put that completely away. Okay, so sewing needle out of the way. Uh, probe I'm gonna put away, although I might want you back. And I'll get these moved. And then, my goodness, that's a lot of feathers. I am losing a lot of feathers. Not overjoyed about that. Not shocked, but not overjoyed. Uh, no, I will not be keeping those little bones. They're really little. Okay, so that gets me my <clears throat> workspace back. So I have my little bird. I'm gonna lift my camera up a bit. So now when I'm messing with it, the head doesn't keep just completely disappearing off the top. All right. So roughly speaking, this is a bird. I have, it's definitely a bird. It looks like a bird. We have a bird here. Great. Um, but now you want to get into the details. And so for tonight, I just want to get broad strokes. This weird tendon sticking out of here. I don't need that. Let's see. I should probably put them on a base. Um, okay. So behold a base. It is made of styrofoam. Uh... I really prefer like smooth styrofoam, but this is what I happen to have because it's made of packing materials. So cool. So all I have to do for this, is I have a feather? Yeah. I'll straighten these back out. And then I'm gonna do two birds. So 
put this off to one side. Yeah, those are really far apart. So I want his hips to be, you know, realistic. That knee up. That's not that's not too bad. Alright, let's see how this actually works. Silly toe. Okay, increase this angle. Sorry, it's hard to do this entirely on screen, so hopefully you guys can see enough here. I've got to get my foot and the ankle angle a little higher. Cause I got it. Yeah, it's not bad. It's looking birdish. Bird adjacent. This guy's got some funky toes. He's going off in some weird directions. Okay. Bend that. Bend that. Okay. So now my bird is standing on my base, right? That's a little bird standing there doing bird stuff. Hello, my bird. And those feet are okay. I got to get these claws to make a little bit more sense. His toes are just a little strange. I, a lot of the button quail I've met have really funky toes. I think that's just weird breeding. Pet trade. Yeah, like I bet when he walked, they actually did stick out sort of sideways the way they look on here uh, which is not great but that's uh, with that's not uncommon for cage birds move that toe in a little bit okay so probably not gonna mess with those two too much but like this toe is malformed so like I doubt he would have stood terribly normally on this little guy anyway so I'm not gonna worry about that too much and my wire bits are jagged and strange so I'm gonna tape those down <sighs> I don't have my favorite tape whatever I forget what it's called strapping tape I think um, is the tape with like fiberglass uh, lines in it that's really great for taping things to your base but I on the list. So I will invert the bird briefly. not a great tape job but that'll keep us from poking me as much okay so now I have to get this guy into a final shape more or less you have such a friendly little face what an incredibly cute bird all right so close that mouth up look how earnest he looks like he's like eager to please hello people of the internet I'm a really cute bird Most button coil I've met are not particularly eager to please. They're more like, oh my god, a human, and they run away. But, you know. I respect that. That's probably a healthy point of view for 
Most things in life. This eyelid ended up being a little pointy on one side. I don't think I ripped it, if I recall. But. Just gotta get that eye set correctly. Man, it just really wants to be pointy in this one direction. I bet I did rip it a little bit. And it's just not super evident until you get to this point. Oh well, that's pretty good. Yeah, this her face is so cute. This is an adorable little coil. Okay. Let's see. I start from the head and move my way down. So, next up is this chest being a little weird. Because I've got this feather right here that doesn't want to lay right, and i got to figure out why. Oh, I think it was just... Being propped up a little funny. So a very um, I'm gonna since I'm gonna have the two birds on the same mount together, they're gonna be posed slightly differently. You know, so they're a little more organic, but they'll be pretty close. They'll just be like they're walking along. Nothing crazy. No wings out. Uh, you know, I really just have to practice basic form. I think I've lost a lot of these neck feathers because this does not really want to set the way I want it to. Let me just blap. Move along the back. But I will pose the other one using the same techniques, if that's what you're asking. I mean, same basic stuff. Okay. There, got her a little more upright. Yeah, this chest is not working with me. Come on. Be a cute, fluffy chest. Or I probably just need to get these wings set, actually. Let me... I'm going to put my pliers. So I've got the uh, wire sticking out here. So I actually want that to be bent a lot more than it currently is. So I probably won't even bother trimming that wire off. I don't mind having it long if it supports the whole structure of the wing. Oh, I was starting to say half the time when you want the feathers to look good, you um, you just lift them and set them back down and they're like, oh look, it's a bird. It's pretty magic. Yeah, I'm really, the face overall, like this this shape, I'm pretty happy with. This is a, I mean, that's a friendly little bird. The, it's got some bad hair going on, and yeah, obviously I haven't done that side yet, but, you know, it's starting to really look birdish. Did your butt sag? Your butt sagged. Poor little baby, saggy butt. Let me fix that. Yep, okay, fix the saggy butt. The feathers on the ends of some of these wings are a little weird. I think it's a combination of being in a uh, baggy, you know, being dead, being a baggy, and then just being kind of a ruffly, multi little, little friend. So some of these aren't quite doing what I want, but... I 
my shoulder move? No, I don't think that's about it. Getting the wings tucked right is so hard because, like, birds know exactly how to tuck their wings and they look like little footballs. And you can't even tell they have a wing until they, they spread them. But I'm a dumb human. My arms don't work this way. And it's always weird to be like, where's the wrist go? I, you know, like, it's, I hold my front appendages really differently and it just feels really different. This should just... It's kind of doing what I wanted. It's more or less doing what I wanted. And I have expertly covered the bald spot on the butt. I'm very happy about that. Um... Alright, so the bird officially has a good side. <laughs> that's, that's all right. We got one. That's one good side. Now let's go to the unfinished side, which is, which is whoa unfinished. Man, okay. Hmm. It's kind of my laptop. Let's see. You know what? We're just gonna roll. It's gonna work out. So I gotta get this wing up. Oh yeah, no, the comb over is a major part of taxidermy. Like, it doesn't come up occasionally, it's every time. So yeah, the comb over, that's what we're doing. Let me... Doot -doot. Okay, we're gonna do it that way. Oh, can I prop this? Ah, ha ha ha, okay. We have made a weird workspace, hooray. Um. Yeah, I have another spot here that the feathers aren't quite covering the way I want. I'm miffed about this chest. I mean, I knew it was going to be a little bit tough because the sewing at the last minute was not going to plan. So I'm not shocked. Um, well, you know, you hope for the best. Might sew this beak shut, although I kind of like having it slightly open. I think it actually looks personable. The feather over that one ear just does not want to sit right. Might go back and screw with that, but right now I'm on this side. I gotta stay on this side. So this wing sitting a little funny here. How about these, oh, these belly feathers on this side are really nice though. Man, sometimes some, some stuff works and the other stuff just is like, nah. Yeah, like this wing is just sitting better than the other side. Don't know why, not gonna question it too closely. I can tell I'm definitely having some trouble because I didn't give the bird a full wash. I didn't want to because I didn't want to lose a bunch of feathers then. And you know, so that's a trade-off. Um, ooh, this part looks really good. I say as if another glorious feather comes off. Oh well. Um, eh, it's starting to look okay. <laughs> Does that have clay on it? Hold on. Yeah, I got clay on a feather. Luckily, clay comes off feathers like real easily, so that's an easy mistake to fix. Or not even a mistake, it's a process. It's an easy step in the process to finish. Here we go. That sounds way better. Alright, well, 
so. Oh, she's really cute. Okay, let me bring her back down here. Look at that happy face. Yeah, she's pretty excited. So, let me, um, you gotta fluff them feathers, man. That's how they, that's what the bird do. You gotta do what the bird do. Alright, I am going to grab some pins. I forgot to get insect pins, so I just, I'm gonna have regular, like, sewing type pins. So let me grab those real quick. If I can find them in a reasonable amount. I have straight pins somewhere. This is again all part of getting used to doing taxidermy at home. Making sure I, oh, there we go. I knew I had the box somewhere. I was confident, I was good. Yeah, I like the mouth open. It's, it's like, hi. Like, there's, a, there's a cute element there. All right, so pretty standard sewing pins. I'm going to try and get ones that have um, the bigger grips on the end so they're easier to pull out later. Something I was apparently unclear at at my last taxidermy class was having people remove the these types of pins after only like a day or two. People left them in for months and then were like, I can't get them out. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this bird is gazing at you adoringly. Hello, I'm a small dead bird. <laughs> How are you? Taxidermy shouldn't be unsettling, but it, yeah, it often is. Okay, so this is going to look super grim from here on out. Not that this wasn't some elements of grim. I am literally taking these pins <clears throat> and jamming them into the bird. Because... I want these final elements to set correctly. And so if I hold them up so that they dry right, um, they'll do better. So like this tail keeps kind of sagging. I'm gonna... Possibly get in there. Nah. You know, you just gotta hold them up so they don't sag with gravity. Oh, wait, oh, I need to get this other wing up. That's a big one. So you guys can kind of see how this, um, you can see this long flight feather under here. I want this up. There you go. And, you know, so that, that'll hold it in place. And I got to take that out after a day or two. Um, Gallimé, by the way, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. So. All right. Probably don't need to add. This is such a little specimen. I don't want to put a ton of pins in. So, like if you're doing a, a big mammal face, you it's all Hellraiser. Like you're pinning everything. Um, but for a little dude like this, I think it might just be the three. I gotta figure out how to get that tail. Oh, this feather's being weird. Hang on. I have a rogue feather. I have I have more than one rogue feather, but I have, this particular one caught my eye. Yeah, so I might need a pin here to keep that rogue feather from sagging. Okay, tail. You're my last tough bit. So I've got the bones of the piga style that they're that are still in here. And so the pin doesn't go in really easily because there's like that. More or less? Ah, I'm losing so many feathers. Where's my poking stick? There we go. I might put a band over this. Sometimes I'll, I'll put like a, a paper strip over the top to kind of hold the whole thing tight. I don't like doing that too much because it, it can change how it dries but I'm not loving this angle I can do this 
Man, this is why I need insect pins. These are too short. Maybe this one's longer. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Okay. I gotta get these tail feathers. Oh, actually, that came together pretty well. Yeah, that tail only need a little bit of structure. That's actually more or less doing what I wanted. These poofy pants are good. I don't need to. I don't need to do too much with the pants. Yeah. Okay. I really like this side now. Like, there's a good movement here. You can see the different feather types. <laughs> All right. Well, Chardon Mom, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, I'm going a little long here, but I might be on tomorrow doing a little bit more fiddling with this guy. So maybe I'll see you then. But sweet sleep. Yeah, I definitely have a couple of these neck feathers that are not, not cooperating fully with where I'm trying to go here. More or less. Yeah, so my last big killer is just this, like, weird divot. You know, like, this this guy right here that's driving me nuts. And sometimes I, I just walk away from a problem like that. I'm like, you know what, it just is going to look like that. And then I sleep well at night and I move on with my life. So <laughs> we may, may be there. You know, I'm going to raise this wing a little bit. There we go. All right. I love their patterning. These are just really pretty little birds. Do I need to lift that? No, that one's okay. That. Yeah, I might, I might just have to call this for right now and look at it fresh tomorrow. Because overall I'm really pretty happy. Like... I've got a couple of these feathers that just don't want to work, but I know sort of the underlying reasons. You know, I know where I had that, that weird stitch that ripped. I'm not entirely sure why this one's a jerk. Sometimes feathers are just jerks. True facts about feathers. Sometimes it's because of understuffing. I didn't think I understuffed this area, but does anybody ever think they did? Yeah, maybe it's understuffing, because if I pull that tissue out, it looks different. Yeah, I think I need to, I need to walk away for a while. So I think tomorrow I'll come back and try to mess with that. But overall, it's a cute little face. It's a cute little bird. It's a, a reasonable bird stance. This belly here is a little understated. So I, I made the chest really poofy and the belly should be a little bigger. So, you know. I would go in a different direction with my next one. So knowing that for when I do the, the second quail, I want to mess with that for sure. But yeah, overall. Aw, oh, thanks not here. I'm glad. Glad you like it. So, so yeah. That's a little taxidermy bird. Uh, again, I think I might play with it a little bit tomorrow. See if I can tease out a little, a few of those little funky bits. But this one's fairly set. And so then I've got a second one that I'm going to do. Same basic style, but I really think I'm going to change that chest and make the uh, the belly a little bigger. So I just have to, like, even that out for the next one. But overall, that's not bad. So for the first uh, full mount that I've done in, like, two years, I'm, I'm pretty happy. All right, then everybody, I'm going to head out. Um, thank you for hanging out. If you guys have any last minute questions, I'll hang on for a minute while I'm cleaning up, but pretty much we'll consider the feed done. So post questions here. 
And then I might be poking on tomorrow. Otherwise, I always do taxidermy something on Saturdays. And on Thursdays, I tinker. I do models. I do whatever. <laughs> I just have fun. Um, so, okay. So, thanks, everybody. I'm going to put up my away screen. But, again, I'll stay on for a minute if anybody has any questions. So, have a good night. And I'll see you guys around.